So now what is the true mechanism here? Well, we came up with two possibilities. Remember that at the very start, we saw that it, this could be an elementary reaction. The rate law matches up with what this would be. I still got that on the board, don't I? If it was an elementary reaction, it would have this rate law. But we were skeptical because ter termolecular reactions are rare. So we looked for another alternative. We said, maybe it's this two-step reaction. Then we said, well, if it's, it, could it be this two-step reaction if the first step was slow? Well, no. Could it be this two-step reaction if the second step was slow? Well, yes. And if, I had, if we had to guess, probably this is a better guess than this. Because, um, well, let's put it this way. Um, so uh, here we have th this step here is the slow step. Now, is this step termolecular? Notice now, now we have a mechanism where all the steps are bimolecular. So this seems more likely. Now we have something where every elementary step is bimolecular, whereas previously we had an elementary step which is termolecular, which happens but is rare. So we don't know for sure, but this is a better guess for the mechanism. There could be a totally new mechanism we haven't thought of, uh, but this is a better guess than this so far. Any questions? This would be a good problem to try again on your own and make sure that all the steps made sense. Okay. So uh, because this had many steps, it would be good to have a step-by-step -step method. Your textbook summarized this on page 719. They had a, a three-step method towards the bottom of page 719, right above the section summary, page 719, to test the validity of the mechanism with a fast initial reversible step, which is what we had here, a fast initial reversible step. Right, right. It's hard to say these two words. Write rate laws for both directions of the fast step. Notice how we had to write rate one forward and rate one reverse. And for the slow step, but we only had to write the, the forward for the slow step. Two, show that the slow step is equivalent to the overall by expressing the intermediate in terms of the reactant, set the forward rate of the, uh, I'm sorry to get confused. Well, anyway, what we did, is um, we assume the first step is, uh, well, we wrote down with the rate expression for the second step, but that will involve an intermediate, or it's likely to involve an intermediate because it's the second step. So we need a new equation that we get by assuming that rate one forward equals rate one reverse. And then we use the substitution method. Do we substitute out the starting material? No. Do we substitute out the product? No. We substitute out the intermediate. Right. So don't give up too soon. You shouldn't just look at this and say, oh, this doesn't match the overall rate expression because it's wrong. You have to try to get rid of the intermediate before you reject it. Well, like I said, this was complicated, so I'd encourage you to go back and redo this, and hopefully you'll have more practice on this in your homework uh, as well, because uh, I hope that all the steps made sense, but it's easy to get confused in the middle unless you practice that a couple times. <laughs> These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.